Descriptions are something we once associated with newspapers and magazines, but now they're part of an increasing number of things we do, and pretty soon that will include using cars. So, how often do you use your car? Where do you go? And what's the annual cost of having one? Well, an inquiry into transport has been told car ownership could be replaced by a monthly fee where members can use whatever car they like when they need it. It's just like Spotify or Netflix, and it's prompted and promoted rather as being cheaper and more convenient than owning, leasing or hiring a vehicle. Mm. And Dr Rebecca Michael knows all about it. She's the Head of Public Policy at the RACQ and joins us from Brisbane. Morning to you, Rebecca. Now, it sounds like this is it's already happening overseas. It's about to take off here, but really it's about a density of po um, population, isn't it, for it to work properly? Well, what we actually are seeing here, yes, it is quite popular overseas vehicle subscription, but it's part of, I guess, a worldwide shift towards access rather than ownership and also the prevalence and the rise of these subscription-based industries. And we're seeing them as being quite popular in Australia. We've got a service that's actually opened up in Brisbane and there's also one in Melbourne and we can see that there are other ones that are about to actually commence. I've seen uh, an estimate, $900 a month. Now, how would that compare to, say, owning a car? Well, for a similar kind of car, you're looking at about $1,000 a month. But what's important to remember is that in that cost, there is also depreciation and fuel. So when you're actually subscribing to a vehicle or you pay one monthly payment, a bit like your Netflix and your mm. Spotify, but all those maintenance and running costs are actually wrapped up, but you do have to pay your fuel. So there are advantages and disadvantages to both. I think the biggest advantage to a subscription service is that you can actually swap that vehicle many times to meet your needs. But the disadvantage is, is that no matter how many times or how long you subscribe for, you'll never actually own the vehicle. Yes, and also you've got to be organised, haven't you? So the good thing is that you can choose the car that you might want for that day. So I just want a little car because I'm driving around the city or I might need a bigger car if we're going on holidays with the family. But you have to be extremely organised. Absolutely. I mean, you really have to know what your needs are and what your budget is. And also these plans like Spotify, not like Netflix, they actually vary on their terms. So some of the vehicle subscription programs, you can swap that vehicle up to three times a month and you mm. can actually have a concierge that will deliver and pick the vehicle up for yeah, you. But handy. other ones don't have as frequent swap overs. Uh, another issue tackled at the parliamentary inquiry was the uptake of electric and hybrid vehicles. It sort of went like gangbusters and it feels like it's slowed a little. There's challenges in Australia when it comes to uh, electric cars. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, w at the moment we're seeing the expansion of that fast charging network. So that definitely is encouraging people to actually increase the uptake of those low emission vehicles like EVs and like hybrids. But with that comes its own problems. Fuel excise is dropping and fuel excise is what funds our roads and our transport infrastructure. So we really need to look at how we're going to address that as we see more low emission vehicles uptaking because, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't get that tax revenue to fund our roads from fuel excise, We'll need to look at other sources. Yeah. Mm. All right, Rebecca. Thank you. Dr. Rebecca Michael. I haven't seen. Do you see those places where you can plug in your car? Yeah, all the time. Do you? And I haven't seen. There's a lot you of. You just don't have your eyes open.